Do you tell people they must accept you in order to get closer to God or in order to personally improve their own life? <laughs> yes, they definitely need to accept me in order to get closer to God and in order to personally improve their own life. And when I say that, what I'm saying is they need to accept me just as they need to accept every other child of God on this planet. If you cannot accept another person who is God's child, how are you ever going to accept God? So the reality is, if you're going to develop in love and truth on this planet and you're going to improve personally with your own development, spiritually and emotionally, you need to accept every person around you. And that includes me, Jesus. You need to also accept me. I'm not unique in that way. I do not believe a person needs to accept me as Jesus in the sense that uh, they need to accept everything that I say without any question. However, one thing that will become apparent during their relationship with God is that everything that I've taught them with their relationship with God will turn out to be true. Now, they'll find that out sooner or later, and in that way they'll come to accept the teachings that I teach. Mm -hmm. And this is what I meant, meant in the first century, like that I had the keys to the kingdom. And the keys to the kingdom that I referred to when I was talking with the so-called Apostle Peter in the first century was all about the key to this relationship with God, the key to this relationship with yourself, the key to your relationship with your soulmate. Th these keys are all a part of the teachings that I share with people. They are things that every single person eventually will accept if they ha want the kind of relationship with God that I'm describing. But they won't accept them because I'm Jesus. Mm -hmm. They'll accept them because these are God's truths and God will eventually show them that they have to accept these truths in order to become at one with God. Yeah. And would you mind defining a little bit more what you mean then by accept? Um, when you say a person, if they want to grow towards God, they have to accept you as much as they've got to accept me, as much as they've got to accept somebody else. Mm -hmm. What does that practically or emotionally mean to accept a person? Well, to accept a person means to respect them, to, to care about their welfare, to care about like, you know, their, their, their life, their day-to-day -day life means to be able to listen to them when they, when they speak. It also means to not accept things that, like their rage and their anger and other emotions. And when I say not accept it, we don't have to be present with those particular emotions. When we accept ourselves as much as we accept another person, that means we love ourselves as much as we love the other person. It means that we would treat each other ethically so I would not demand of you something that I would not ask of myself, for example. And I would not demand that you listen to my abuse when I would never listen to your abuse. Um, so so these are, these are, this is sort of the ethical treatment. When we accept a person, we treat them ethically, no matter what our religious background and what our, what our belief systems are. Mm -hmm. And so within that, you're saying that even though I can accept you and still be in a state of acceptance, even if I say, I don't want to have anything more to do with you because you're being quite abusive at this moment, yeah. I'm st I can still be in a state of acceptance. And I guess that's what I was trying to understand from you. Exactly. So, so what, what is the state inside my heart when I do that that still is accepting? Well, you, you, are not, you are not judging the person for their behaviour. You're not condemning them because it's not even your right or ability to condemn. However, you're just saying to them, I can't engage with this with you. I have to remove myself because I accept myself as much as I accept you. And this is, we get, this is the principle of ethical behaviour with others. If we are truly ethical in the way in which we act with other people, we will not expect of them things that we would certainly not do ourselves or, and we certainly wouldn't uh, demand of them things that we wouldn't demand of ourselves. We would not try to manoeuvre them or push them into a certain direction that and, and in particular, we wouldn't try to do it if we wouldn't do it to us, if they wouldn't be able to do it to ourselves. So we need to consider these aspects when we're dealing with people. If we truly accept people, we will have a very much a live and let live type of attitude. We won't be attacking them all the time, condemning them for their choices or decisions. We will just speak the truth in each case that we're given the opportunity. And we won't do it with rage and anger behind it because there is no need for rage and anger behind something and obviously they're driven by other emotions that we need to address if we do have rage and anger 
So my feelings are when we accept a person, that's when we really love them. We really care about their welfare, but we must also accept ourselves as much as we accept another person. And that means that if the other person is harming us, then we would not accept that behaviour, which is different than accepting the person. When we have an attitude of judgment to people, what we're doing is we're projecting emotion at them. And basically, with an attitude of judgment, what we're doing is we're saying to the person that they are not as good as us, that they don't have as much worth as we do, that they are unworthy for our attention or, 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 or even our time. The reality is that every single person on this planet is worthy. Every single person on this planet is able to engage our time, with one exception. And the exception is if they treat us in an unloving manner, if they treat us in a manner that demonstrates that they do not have the right concept of what love or ethical behaviour is. Then, of course, that's the exception. That's the time when we would no longer engage that particular person's time and company. We would still love them and accept them as people, but we wouldn't be able to accept their behaviour perpetrated towards ourselves, nor would we be able to accept that same behaviour perpetrated towards someone else. In other words, we can, we can actually say, no, your behaviour is wrong. I know it's wrong because it's unloving and it causes pain. And I don't want to share with you in the engagement of that behaviour. I don't want to enable you to engage that behaviour with myself or with other people. And as far as it depends on me, I don't want to share with you in this behaviour, so I'm going to withdraw from you. You can withdraw from an individual and still love them and still care about their welfare and, in fact, still pray for them and still desire their happiness. Mm -hmm. When you don't care for a person, you start attacking their happiness. You start condemning their behaviour. You start being in a rage with them. You will even have a tendency towards violence towards them or wanting them to be harmed. And this is all an indication of unethical and unloving behaviour. Mm. There is no need to engage in that form of behaviour with any person, no matter what their belief systems. Mm. Yeah, I think the feeling for me is what about allowance. If I accept everyone, I can choose to not be in their company, but I'll still allow it. And that, to me, is a feeling of acceptance of... Um, you still allow what? I still allow them to be however they want to be and not try to control it. I will just go away. Yes, but if a person was in my location, then I could not allow it. Yeah, totally. The reality is that there yeah. are times when I could not allow a yeah. person's behaviour without strenuously... Um, sticking up for what I believe is the right Good ethical behaviour. Yeah, so, I can't so, describe this feeling inside of me, yeah. Because when you say that, I agree with that. So it's, yeah. Well, there's, the feeling inside of you, I feel, is the feeling of guilt that you have when you ask somebody to leave your life who has treated you badly. And this causes you to have a, a, a feeling where, that you don't know whether you've done the right thing or not in terms of how, how you remove a person from your life. I definitely have that, that's yeah. for sure. But there's some pure feeling, I think, which means that I feel like, and I'm open to it being an error, that I feel like I can accept my family treating me. I, I, I can accept them as people, but not accept their treatment. That's what I've been saying, yeah. isn't it? Like, in the yeah. end, in the end we, we can accept the person but we do not have to accept their behaviour. And, and the person as an individual is different to their behaviour. Yeah. Their behaviour is a subset of lots of different problems and, and things that have gone on with them. For example, the behaviour of certain individuals is completely dependent upon the choices they've made in their life and also their history. So, you know, we, and in accepting the person, we accept their choices and we accept their history, but we might not agree with their behaviour particularly if their behaviour is, is damaging towards other people or ourselves. Mm -hmm. It's immaterial whether it's other people or ourselves because if we're ethical, we will treat ourselves the same as we treat other people. So uh, even if they damaged an average person on the street, then m my, I would have a problem with their behaviour. So, for example, if somebody was walking down the street and they decided to yell a heap of abuse at somebody and the person who's yelling the abuse happens to be one of my friends... I would draw a line and say, look, mate, I, like I can't be your friend 
while you keep doing all of this, I can accept you as an individual, but this behaviour, mate, is way out of line. Mm -hmm. and, and whenever you engage in this behaviour, you're not being loving or caring for the other person. You're being an obnoxious person, actually, and I can't agree with that behaviour. And to be honest, I can't be with you if you're going to engage in this behaviour all the time because all I'm doing is enabling your behaviour. So my, the most loving thing I can do under those circumstances is say, I can't be with you while you're doing this behaviour. The best thing for me to do is withdraw from you until you're willing to change this behaviour, then I'd love to be with you again. And that is acceptance without acceptance of the poor behaviour. Mm. Mm. That's what love would do. Mm. Love has principles, you know, and this is the thing I feel that many people don't understand. Everyone, there's a big tendency in many people to believe that love just accepts everything. No, it doesn't. Love has principles. It, it, it accepts the individual but it does not accept everything. It, ex it doesn't accept their behaviour if their behaviour is out of harmony with love. Yeah, yeah. As regards people accepting me personally, they don't need to, as I've already explained, accept me personally. However, they are going to need to accept the truths that I teach at some point in their lives. The reason why is because they're not my truths. If they want to have a relationship with God and they want to have a happy life and they want to be at one with their soulmate and with God, at some point in the future, they are going to have to accept all the things that I've taught them that I've said for certain are true. Now, I'm not saying that because I, they have to accept what I'm saying. I'm saying because I've had to accept them as well. And I, as I've already explained to many people, I, I, I didn't want to always accept them, but I had to come to accept them because they were God's truths. And God would taught me that they were God's truths. So at some point in our future, we will need to come to accept everything that God teaches us as truth if we wish to have a relationship with God and if we wish to have uh, an, one type of relationship with, each, with our soulmate. This is an essential. We can't avoid it. However, I'm not saying that a person has to do that. I'm just saying if they want a relationship with God and if they want a you know, at one minute relationship with God and their soulmate, they are going to have to accept these teachings at some point in the future. I'm not saying they have a time limit on that. I'm not saying they're going to be punished if they don't. And I'm not saying that uh, anything else will occur as a result. I'm just saying they will have to accept these teachings if they want to become at one with God at some point in the future. So just to clarify that a little bit, mm -hmm. are you saying that people... I thought who... it was pretty clear already, but go on. <laughs> <laughs> well, I suppose further to that. Yeah. Further to that. Are you saying that if people do not know any divine truth, then they do not have a relationship with God? No, I'm saying that many times people have uh, parts of the truth in their soul already. So there are people who do not know formally the divine truth. And knowing the divine truth is not about knowing the divine truth intellectually. Knowing the divine truth is about knowing the divine truth in your soul. Now, there are many people who have never heard the divine truth who know some divine truth in their soul, right? So it's not about a formal acceptance or some kind of process or that you go through with God. It's about the emotional process you engage with God. Now, if a person does not have a relationship with God, then they will not know much divine truth. They might know some, but they won't know much. If a person develops their relationship with God and receives divine love through that process, they'll know a lot more and eventually they'll know lots and lots and lots and they'll know that there's even more to discover and they'll keep discovering more and more and more as their life goes on. They'll realise, in fact, that it's an infinite process. That's what will happen as they get, get to know the truth. So a person who's never heard the truth may already have some divine truth in their soul because they've entered this kind of relationship with God, relationship with things around them. But without accepting these truths in the future, they will, their relationship will stagnate at some point. And there are many people on this planet whose relationship with God has stagnated as a result of their refusal to accept a part of divine truth that, that I've been teaching with them for thousands of years. Now, I'm not saying that I'm anything special in all of that. I'm just saying that God has taught me these things. I have had to come to the same recollection myself. I have had to accept these truths even when I haven't wanted to. I've had to come to accept them at some point if I wanted to grow my own relationship with God. And I desperately and desire, desire my relationship with God. 
And as a result of that, I've been willing to change my own personal perspective and willing to change my own personal belief systems and my own behavior and attitude in order to get closer to God. And every single person who wants to be close to God will need to go through exactly the same process.